Well, we've just had a 7.5 magnitude earthquake in Papua New Guinea. Some had predicted it exactly in this 10 day range and we had a 7.2 on May the 6th and uh, about a week later a 7.5. So it looked like the 7.2 was a four shock and we've had a number of huge aftershocks right after the 7.5. Let's hope we won't have another major uh, quake in that area because we don't know if the 7.5 is the last of it or not. But uh, we've had this large earthquake during the largest magnetic storm that we've had in two years as space weather has told us. Increased chances of geomagnetic storms and uh, we've had them coming in for the past three days and we've had uh, this 7.5 a few hours ago. But that's not, that's not the last of the geomagnetic these CMEs coming in. We have a series of CMEs approaching Earth. The action begins, the big action begins today when the first CME is expected to arrive at us and they will be continuing until May the 17th as additional CMEs follow. Storm levels will almost certainly reach category G1 which is minor with isolated periods of G2 moderate storming as well and the auroras could cross the U.S. even reaching down to Wyoming. Wyoming, you know, we're talking about uh, the supervolcano area. That's pretty far south. Um, if you can see it, Wyoming, Montana, Idaho, I mean, you know, it's, it's pretty far south. The auroras were bright enough to see reflected on still waters of Lake Superior. And as the ISS made visible paths during the best part of that show, right across the... Uh, above the lake with the northern lights. You can see an image of this. I'll leave a link below on space weather. And uh, so we're expected to have uh, a new CME range coming in from the 17th to the 18th as well. CME sweep aside cosmic rays. They cause atmospheric radiation levels to drop. The phenomenon is called forebrush decrease, named after Physicist Scott E. Forbush, Forbush decrease, who first described it. The May 13th launch of an air balloon carrying an X-ray gamma ray sensor to the stratosphere more than 100,000 feet above the Earth. Uh, it was launched to find that cosmic rays are increasing, which is a trend that might temporarily reverse this week. Now, the May 13 launch established a baseline by measuring levels before the CME arrives. During and after the CME launches will take place in the days ahead. So we'll have results after that. Um, they're expecting the CMEs coming in the next few days, so they'll be registering them. Now, as far as the uh, earthquakes and the CMEs, it's not the first time we've seen this happening. This seems to be a regular recipe for earthquakes. Large magnetic storms in two years hit Earth Tuesday and uh, Russian scientists warned saying that increased solar activity threatens electronics and people's health as well. We've known that. We've made uh, certain various uh, very enlightening videos on that. They were written by uh, uh, doctors who had evidence and uh, written scientific papers having to do with the fact that uh, solar changes and uh, CMEs and changes in the Earth's electromagnetic uh, energy and even the uh, uh, Earth's magnetic frequencies do have an effect on people's health. Now, when these CMEs come in, you may have be, you may be getting migraine headaches. You may be fe feeling something out of sorts. Um, these headaches are probably from the CMEs. There are many people that are very sensitive to weather. There are people that are even sensitive to the changes of the moon every few days. That's how sensitive people are, you know. It's hard to believe because I'm not that sensitive, but some people I know are. Now, this phenomenon may divert spacecraft. The CMEs may divert spacecraft 
uh, meaning satellites, I mean, from their orbits and create problems for the satellite communication and GPS navigation. The Laboratory of X-ray Astronomy at the Lebedev Institute of the Russian Academy of Science says, the radio interference and aurora borealis, that's the northern light, in unusual places will be the other side effect of this magnetic storm. It's, it'll be reaching so far south. These northern lights may be seen in the sky starting from latitude of 60 degrees, where Russia's St. Petersburg is located and above. Now, during these events, the voltage in electri electrical systems may require correction. False triggering of safety alarms is quite possible, the scientists say, but it's not only hardware, it's also people's health that can be affected and will be affected. Those who are aware that they are weather sensitive may feel discomfort and should take precautions. Now, I don't know what kind of precautions they would take for these things. I mean, this is just all over the all over us. It's, what are you going to do? Close yourself in a metal, metal cage, in a Faraday cage? I doubt that that would be feasible. Now, the storm begins, as we said, early Tuesday, as Space Weather said. It'll last during the day today. It'll, they will get hit with the first ones today and will last again until Friday, Saturday. And we'll have a new swarm coming in Saturday and Sunday. Normalization only expected uh, Wednesday night, the researcher said. Uh, well, that's not so. Space Weather says it differently, that we're just getting the first one coming to us today, which is Wednesday. So this current event is a large one compared to what happened in recent years. It was ranked at level three, with the strongest being five. The five storm occurring once every 10 to 20 years. Now, some of us may be aware that there are amateur researchers there that have speculated there may exist a connection between solar storms and earthquakes. While presently there is not any official acceptance of this theory, someday as a strong solar storm, there may um, the same day as the strong solar storm, there we have our 7.5 magnitude earthquake in Papua New Guinea. It seems to lend greatly to support the theory that uh, it's not just a big coincidence. Of course it's not a big coincidence. There are many, as we said, just the past few years. Scientists have been very serious about this and have, have written papers um, which have been accepted that, yes, ma a geomagnetic storm, solar storms, and the CMEs do have an effect on uptick in earthquakes, not only earthquakes, but also volcanic activity. And of course, people's health. Oh, and, and also these same papers. I, I have to put this here as a conclusion. Uh, it's not the, only the fact that uh, the sun and the earth, have, the earth's frequency have uh, effect on our health. Uh, we can also, Listen to this. This is what they found. This I'm not kidding you. Uh, I'll try and find the video so I can put the link in it uh, in the description box. We, with our prayers, can stabilize the Earth's frequency and weather and geomagnetic forces. We can also stabilize and mitigate the sun's energy. Uh, our prayers and our, it's like our talking to the sun or our talking to the earth, our talking to them through God, of course, and uh, they will receive that. They will, they, that, that um, has an effect on their energy. It's like a love or a, or a, a, a request for them to please be gentle with us. Let's put it that way. And let's remember that definitely, definitely, Moses must have known this because Joshua knew this. When Joshua spoke to the sun and the moon and told them to stand still while he was fighting the enemies of Israel, he actually uh, told them to stand still and uh, so that he would have enough daylight to finish his job uh, that was given to him by God to do. God told him, Joshua, don't be afraid, I'm always with you. Uh, there are so many things we just don't know yet uh, that we are capable of, each one of us, and collectively, it's just astonishing. 
but yes, this definitely has an uptick on, uh, we have this jolt, this what, what Terrell Blackstar calls electromagnetic jolt um, coming in and uh, uh, rattling the earth. And also after we have to uh, also remind you that during, it's not just the earthquake of Papua New Guinea that struck us. The thing is that all of the seismographs worldwide are showing that the whole earth is rattling. It's still rattling from that earthquake in Papua New Guinea. It is still rattling. All the um, uh, helipods, the heliplots, sorry, I'll leave a link below for you for that too, are black with earthquake. Black. I mean, we're talking about, uh, which one is a little bit white, is Pit Cairn Island in South Pacific. There are some that have data not available, but they are, even in Spain, it's pitch black. Australia, Ecuador, uh, Midway Island, USA, Kazakhstan, Western Australia, Japan, Canary Islands. That's dangerous because they, those, are, those are all volcanoes there. Um, Chile, Zambia in Africa, nor even Norway, Kenya, Ukraine, Hawaii. Well, Hawaii, okay, it's a hot spot anyway. Finland and Norway are blacked out. Afghanistan, Johnson Island, USA. Uh, where else? Uh, Republic of Korea. Uh, Hockley, Texas is blacked out. Marianne Islands, Grafenberg, Germany blacked out, Ethiopia blacked out, Armenia blacked out. Tuvalu is not that bad. You can see some white on there. Uh, and uh, Bilibino, Russia is not that bad. But Casey, Australia is blacked out, Turkey is blacked out, Samoa, New Mexico, USA is blacked out, Aleutian Islands, Alaska is halfway blacked out. Uh, the whole earth is rattling, rattling with blacked out, blacked out graphs because of the earthquakes. Unbelievable. If you'd like to join me on my Patreon account, you will hear content not covered by mainstream media. These riveting stories will be based on my research and I will state my opinions and give my personal insight on diverse and controversial subjects and world events, events not covered by mainstream media and not certainly on, not supported by YouTube guidelines. So whatever I have on my Patreon, most of those will not be on my YouTube channel. Please consider becoming a member today more of the, the most significant and important videos will be on my Patreon channel. Your support helps me to continue my research and keeps this YouTube channel alive. And we depend on your support, your generous charity, because we help economically challenged families here in Athens, Greece, in Kapota, and we also help the young generation with university tuition and the community around our church. Thank you.